Hey everyone, it's Andrew. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a video doing an unboxing, review, and first time grinder testing of the Krups Burr Coffee Grinder. For those of you that know my channel, you know that I've previously done reviews on the Bodum Bistro Coffee Grinder and that I've had that grinder for about a year. However, recently I brought the Bodum Bistro to work so that I can make whole bean coffee at work. And so I needed a replacement grinder for home and I actually decided to purchase the Krupp Spur coffee grinder as a replacement. And so what we'll do in this video is we'll do an unboxing of the Krupp Spur coffee grinder, we'll walk through its general features, and then I'll grind whole bean coffee with this grinder so you can get a general sense of how it performs. As always, if you're interested in potentially purchasing this, I'll leave links in the description below, but otherwise we'll get started. Okay, so this is the Krupp's coffee and spice grinder. I ended up getting this from Walmart for about $20. I previously had the Bodum Bistro coffee grinder for about a year and I've really liked that grinder a lot. However, I ended up recently bringing the Bodum Bistro to work so that I can grind whole beans at work when making coffee. And so I went to Walmart the other day to try to find a replacement Bodum Bistro, but it was not in stock. And so I came across the Krupps coffee grinder at that time and it looked very similar as far as the overall design and layout. So I decided to purchase this for about $20. Um, as far as what it's set up, it should be very similar to the Bowdoin Bistro. Essentially, it's going to be a coffee grinder with a one um, touch button that grinds the coffee. Um, it's going to be a black design with a clear lid. It's virtually identical to the Bowdoin Bistro. Um, there's nothing too special about the box. Um, the box really says that it's a st stainless steel blade. Um, it, st it states that it can grind up to three ounces at a time, which was equivalent to 12 cups of coffee and that there's a one touch feature as far as grinding and that they can recommend using it for coffee, nuts, herbs, and other spices. Um, there is a two year warranty on this so that's always a nice feature um, but otherwise we'll get this open. In the box you're going to have um, a general uh, warranty as far as the actual uh, two-year warranty for the grinder. There's going to be an instruction manual as well. We're not going to really go through these because this should be pretty straightforward. Um, but here's the grinder itself. And so the grinder is this shiny um, kind of plastic black design. It does say Krups along the, uh, the bottom on one end and then nothing else on the other end. So that's really what it looks like. On the top here, you're going to have a lid that is going to be clear plastic with a switch here that'll uh, provide power as far as turning it on and off. And then within here, there's gonna be a burr grinder within the st stainless steel opening. Um, so the grinder looks very similar as far as design compared to the Bowdoin Bistro grinder. The only difference is that this is kind of more of an oval shape in the inside here. Otherwise, it's very similar as far as the layout, design, kind of the general features as far as the setup. Um, the button here as far as switching, uh, switch here. Um, I'll say that at, compared to the Bowdoin Bistro, it is, uh, does appear a little bit cheaper. Um, the Bowdoin Bistro has like an integrated button where it's more like flush with the container and extends down. You can refer to that video, but here it's just kind of this plastic kind of piece here that pushes down and like we'll turn it on and off. It's a little bit kind of che cheaper, flimsier looking. Um, real quick, I'm gonna pull up, uh, pull apart the, um, the extension cable or the power cord just so you can get a general sense of how long this is. As always, this, will, this is not battery powered so you will need to um, put it to the wall. So it's about maybe three feet as far as the cable. So it's something that you can put on the counter easily, um, but that's not too long so you don't have much too much, like too far a cord as far as that. Uh, Real quick, what I'll do is I'll plug this in and then we'll just start walking through grinding coffee uh, with this coffee grinder. Okay, so real quick, I'll show you the features of the coffee grinder now that it's plugged in. So really, once you have the um, power on, you can just basically put the lid on like this, which slides right on, and you're gonna press and hold this button. Um, and that's what turns it on. There are no different, there are not different settings as far as the coarseness or fineness for this grinder. So very similar to the Bowdoin Bistro, really it's just pressing and holding this button for a period of time and changing the length of time in which you grind it to vary the uh, fineness for your coffee. I'll say that first impressions compared to the Bowdoin Bistro, I, it does seem a little bit um, smoother as far as the on off feature of the grinder. And then I will 
will say that it is quieter. Um, it's not, a, it, and it doesn't vibrate as much. So when I hold it here, it's definitely quieter. It's not as loud compared to the Bowdoin Bistro. Um, the button is definitely like more flimsy from that aspect, but otherwise um, it's virtually identical. And so what we'll do now is very similar to the Bowdoin Bistro. I'm gonna walk through grinding coffee with this grinder. What we'll do is we'll do a series of time periods as far as grinding so you can get a general sense of how well it performs. And so what we'll do is we'll do one scoop for the first uh, grind. We'll put this on for about five seconds and then we'll pour it out and you'll get a general sense of how well it grinds. So bear with me. Okay, and so that's about five seconds. And so if we pour this out, and so that's uh, what it looks like. So it's basically, I'd say the coarseness of like a French press coffee. So you have about five seconds of grind there. Um, we'll pour that out there. And so that's that first grind. All right, now we'll do another scoop and then we'll double it. And we'll just do 10 seconds this time, okay? So, okay, so that's 10 seconds. All right, and we'll pour this out right here. And so it's a little bit finer as far as the overall um, coarseness. It's not too great, but I'll put that side by side right there. And then what we'll do is we'll add another scoop, and this time we'll do it for 15 seconds. So that's about 15 seconds. I will say that um, compared to the Bowdoin Bistro, the, the overall depth of this grinder is a little bit deeper. So um, it doesn't seem to be stuck to the walls as much compared to the Bowdoin Bistro. And um, so that's a nice feature as well. So this is what it looks like at about 15 seconds. So hopefully you can see the finest, but it's a little bit finer, um, kind of like a mid grind, something that might be approaching the, the grind for like a pour over maybe. And as you can tell, um, it does kind of actually get stuck on the bottom here. So as, as I've discussed in the past, for these types of grinders, you should always get an espresso brush. Um, that allows you to clean this out very easily. I'll show you later on what I mean by that. Um, but an espresso brush allows you to fully clean this out entirely. And so what we'll do next is another scoop. We'll do this for about 20 seconds, okay? So bear with me. Okay, so that's about 20 seconds. We'll take a look at this. And so, um, it's definitely finer compared to this last one. You can tell there's a noticeable difference. There's less chunks in it. Um, so it's definitely getting finer as we go. So I'd say that um, really you need about 15, 20 seconds in order to get the coarseness that you want for coffee for this. Um, the lower end here was like five seconds. Um, you could probably use for French press coffee, this area here, um, but once you start getting to the middle range here is really when you'll be using it for like pour over or something like that. Um, definitely as compared to the Bodum Bistro, this does, um, the coffee actually does seem to be sticking a little bit more in the inside here. Um, so it might just be the, the stainless steel kind of layer here um, is just more prone for sticking. And so then what we'll do is we'll just do another um, scoop here and I'm just gonna do it for 30 seconds just to get a full sense of how well this performed. Um, and then depending on that, then we might do one more grind. All right, so that's about 30 seconds. I actually have my espresso grinder here, so, or uh, espresso brush here, so I'll give you a general sense of um, kind of what I mean by as far as using this. But here's what it looks like with 30 seconds. Um, so that's definitely fine. There's no chunks or anything like that. It works really well. Um, we'll put this out over here. Um, and as you can tell, so just like me, you just trying to pour it out, there's still a bunch of chunks. So definitely get an espresso brush for this grinder. Um, and hopefully it can clear out pretty easily. Um, but basically this is what I mean by this. So get a brush like this and then you'll be able to brush it out entirely. And so I know I've made an absolute mess on the, the board behind me, um, but even with the brush, it's pretty hard to get this empty. Um, as you can tell, there's like this espresso brush works very well with my Zossen House grinder and my Bodum Bistro, um, but for some reason, it's not really working well for this. 
Um, there's still chunks along the edge here. So I'm thinking that what's happening is with this grinder, it's heating up a little bit too much where the, the coffee is activating the oils a little bit and now it's um, making it stick to the sides. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, see, it's still stuck there. But, um, all right, so that's the grinder itself. Um, as far as performance, what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna set up the camera so that you can zoom in and see that. Okay, so this is after five seconds, okay? That's 10 seconds, that's 15 seconds, that was about 20 seconds, and that's 30 seconds. As you can tell, the, the coarseness does definitely get finer. Um, by the time you get to about 15, 20 seconds, it's something that you could easily use this for pour over coffee, and it does function very well. I'll say that overall, um, as compared to the Bowdoin Bistro, um, the overall grinding effectiveness is better. Um, it does seem to have less chunks. What you'll find with the Bowdoin Bistro is that, especially at the lower grind, you have a bunch of chunks and you'll actually have some whole beans that happen in that um, versus this seems to be more of a consistent grind um, I will say though that based on obviously from this video that the coffee grinder itself does seem a little bit messier um, so even with an espresso brush it's not like really cleaning up as easily there's a lot of residual uh, coffee in there so that's something that I don't really like about this grinder um, but like even as you can tell it's like i'm brushing this and it's just not coming out as easily um, so it does take some time to clean it um, so that's really a general review of the crops burr coffee grinder i'll say that overall the functionality works very well for grinding coffee it is a little bit smoother as far as consistency compared to the Bowdoin bistro um, the design is very similar however it is kind of a cheaper build um, the Bowdoin bistro does have some grooves in it and some knot like knots that pop up on the side so you can get a little bit better grip on this and the Bowdoin Bistro does have a better uh, button mechanism as far as pressing down um, for this where it's more integrated and less flimsy it doesn't wobble as much um, so that's nicer about the Bowdoin Bistro however compared to the Bowdoin Bistro I'd say that this does grind coffee a little bit better as far as the consistency and so um, kind of in like a head to head I don't know which I would one I'd really go with I'd probably lean towards the Bowdoin Bistro just for the convenience of the fact that it's easier to clean and it doesn't make as much mus mess with the uh, with the espresso brush um, but the the consistency is really nice the fact that you're able to grind such fine with this and there's variation there um, so it's kind of like a take it for what it is um, what it's kind of whatever you want with this um, so if you have questions comments please post them below but that was a review of the Krups Burr coffee grinder hopefully this video was helpful um, I found this at Walmart for about $20 which is very co comparable to the Bowdoin Bistro um, in general I'd probably lean towards the Bowdoin Bistro just because I use a lot of their products more for other things like my pour over and my French press um, but Krups has been around for a while so it's always a brand that you can find as well so thanks for watching. If you have questions, comments, post them below. Otherwise, if you like this video, hit the like button and you can always subscribe to my channel as well.